Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at money supply, specifically M1 and M2. This is something that you'll be expected to know in your introductory macroeconomics class in either university or in grade 12, and for any future macroeconomics class after that. With that said, let's get into it. So first things first, there's actually five different types of money supply. There's M0, M1, M2, M3, and M4, each of these denoting different levels of money. However, in a macroeconomics class, we typically focus on two of them, that is M1 and M2. Now to simplify what these are, it's worth noting that M1 has the most liquidity. Now remember, liquidity is how easy an asset can be turned into cash. So M1 would include, well, actual currency or actual cash. So this includes your coins, your bills, bank reserves. So this is the money the bank actually keeps in the vaults and then demand deposits and demand deposits can be thought of as your checking account or your account with the bank that can be immediately turned into cash on demand. So using a debit card at a grocery store, for example, you can access all of the money in your checking account as if it was cash. It's called a demand deposit because well, it's available on demand. M2, on the other hand, is slightly less liquid. That is, it includes all of M1 plus your savings account, which isn't as liquid as your checking account, time and small time deposits. Now this includes accounts that are locked for a specific amount of time. That is, you put your money in and then you can't access it until that time frame is up. And then you will typically receive some sort of interest payment on top of your principal. And time versus small time is the amount or the magnitude of money that you put in. Anything under $100,000 is typically considered a small time deposit. We also have certificates of deposits. So think of this as your GICs. And then finally, money market funds. Now, as I was saying before, there's actually five different classifications of money, including M0, M3, and M4. However, it's worth noting that this is just a re-diversification of the current things that we include in M1 and M2 in economics class. So take a look at this. All we do for M0 is include our actual currency, not including demand deposits. So M0 would be your coins, your bills, and your bank reserves. That's all of the cash that's in circulation or in the bank vault. Then we have M1, which is all of that cash plus your checking accounts. M2 is just M1 plus your savings accounts plus your small or time deposits and certificates of deposit. So anything short term, that's a little bit more liquid than M3. M3 is all of M2, which is all of M1 and M0, plus your money market funds. Money market funds can be thought of as mutual funds or ETFs or some sort of fund that is not easily turned into cash. So it's less liquid than M2 and obviously much less liquid than M1. And then finally we have M4, which is M3, plus any and all other of the least liquid assets you can think of. Typically these are assets that are outside of commercial banks. So they're not really turned back into cash in a very small time frame, if ever. So we don't really need to know M4, which is why you'll notice you never have it reported on the news. Nobody really talks about it in economics class. So once again, we take all of these things, we condense them all into M1 and M2 for macroeconomics. However, there are technically five different classifications, but they can be simplified as you see on screen here. Now, money supply figures are given every single month by the central bank of your country. And when they report these numbers, they typically only report M1 and M2. And if you ever hear about money supply on the news, you're probably hearing about M1. We hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel. And of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.